Hello, I'm EVM and welcome back to the channel and to a, a video which shouldn't really need to exist. But given the fact that I get half a dozen to a dozen comments about this specific thing every day over the hundreds of video, videos I've done over the last six, seven years, I thought it's about time to answer this question. When I say comment, it's more thinly veiled dig at me, by which I mean I made stupid decisions as an eco-mentalist, which I'm not and never said I am an environmentalist, but let's keep going. Uh, I've made stupid decisions by electrifying pretty much everything in our life, in our house, in our transportation methods. We have an electric car instead of a petrol one, although we still have a petrol one. And we have now, of course, more recently, got a heat pump, which relies on electricity rather than the gas central heating boiler we had before. And that is by far the most common common, should I say, heating system in the UK. The general premise of this uh, thinly veiled common dig slash, you know, your family's going to freeze to death in winter, um, sort of nice YouTube thing, is that, well, what are you going to do in the event of a power cut? How are you going to drive your electric car, you moron, when there's a blackout? How are you going to heat your house in the hot water in the middle of winter when there's no power to enable you to heat the house up, to heat your hot water up, you're basically relying on a single thing and you're an idiot. See, my thoughts are I could now point people to this video rather than copying and pasting the same response into each and every one I get or just having to ignore them because there's so many. And I thought this would also give me an opportunity to point out a slight flaw in the logic that relying on electricity for everything is a very bad thing. Because we already do. You see, let, well, let, let, let me split it up. You've got the house in one and you've got the car in the other. Let's start with the car. We have a full electric vehicle. We've had one for, I think, nearly eight years now. Um, but we also have a petrol car. So let's imagine a scenario where we've got 20 miles worth of range in both an electric and a petrol car. And then, oh, there's a power cut. And this would have to be one hell of a power cut because it wouldn't just affect this house. It'd have to affect, well, miles around us, essentially, because otherwise we'd just use the local charging network, as reliable it is, as it is. At least there are some out there. So essentially, this house would be a big wide-scale power cut for at least several days to have any real effect. And that happens all the time in the UK, doesn't it? That aside though, let's assume it has happened. What do we do? Well, essentially we would take our car and then find that without electricity, it cannot be fueled. There's no way of driving anymore. As soon as that 20 miles of range disappears, that's it, we're stranded, it's useless. And the same would apply to the electric car as well. See what I did there? Thought we were talking about the electric car, didn't you? Oh yeah, very clever me. You see, when you go to a petrol station, that doesn't have power, you'll find that you can't pump anything into the car. So therefore, you're reliant, as much as an EV owner is, on electricity. And before anybody says you can siphon it out or you can pump it from somewhere, this is the modern world. This isn't Mad Max. It's not The Walking Dead. You just essentially not be able to fuel your car and have to go back home again. It doesn't really change anything at all. We're as you know, reliant on it as each other. Now let's get to the probably the bigger one, the more important one. Because this could have some real world health effects on, on some people, genuinely. Especially if it happened in the middle of winter. The heat pump we now have, without electricity, that won't work. Absolutely. There's, there's no way around it. Without electricity, the heat pump cannot do anything. It, it's useless. The gas central heating boiler, which is, like I said, the most common in the UK by a country mile... That's what we had before. So if we'd have kept that, which a lot of people who were putting this comment in are telling me I was stupid to get rid of, then we would again be in the same position. Gas boilers require electricity to run. Turn the isolation switch off next to your boiler. See how, see how much heat comes out of it. Even though the heat's generated with gas, you're still relying on, let's face it, what everything in society is right now. What you're watching this on. Electricity. It's the key to everything. So the way I look at it, 
is that we chose what we chose for other reasons that have nothing to do with this video and, and not in any way saying that people should go out and buy a heat pump because they're too expensive for the majority of applications. Electric vehicles, again, more expensive, they have issues, the charging network's just unreliable at the moment, so I'm not saying go and get one or ha ha, I'm right. I'm saying for this specific topic, what do you do in the event of a blackout? Well, we both do the same thing. We don't drive or we don't heat our house. It's as simple as that. I didn't think it really needed saying, but the amount of messages I'm getting from this in a not as nice way, shall we say, in the in the messages, when you know, they're not really using nice words, it's just getting bizarre and bonkers that it's not tweaked to somebody that if you, know, if you don't have electric, then you don't really have anything, I'm afraid. If you look at it this way, a petrol car and a gas central heating boiler is reliant on two things. You have to have petrol and electricity to refuel a petrol car. You have to have gas and electricity to get heat out of a gas boiler. Whereas an electric car just needs electric or a heat pump just needs electric. This is one reliance, this is two reliance. If anything, it's a more robust solution. I get it. The whole rolling blackout thing that the Daily Mail was telling us all would have on a daily basis throughout winter and clearly never happened, at least it didn't, didn't here, it could and it might do in the future. And before anybody says, if everybody gets electric, how's the power grid going to cope? That's another comment I get all the time. Rather than me say anything in this video, just search on YouTube for a Top Gear video. It's really done well. It's uh, Chris Harris and he asked the National Grid if we've got en enough juice. That's literally the, the title of the video. Top Gear, enough juice, you'll find it straight away. And they ask, in terms of EVs anyway, have we got enough? And they answer that. So go, go watch on that if you think we don't have enough generation or capacity in the UK. Now again, I'm not trying to say go after what I've done. I'm not, you know, I'm not saying that you know, keeping a gas boiler is a bad thing. You know, we, we need it for reasons that have nothing to do with the environment. I'm not an environmentalist. So, you know, ju just, just accept that some people buy things that you don't like. You don't have to post on the videos that you clearly hate. This is another thing I find baffling. I hate this guy. Oh, but he's releasing a new video. Let's watch it so I can complain. I guess that's YouTube, isn't it? After six, seven years of this, I should have got used to it by now, but I have an inability to, to, to not. So uh, yeah, that's all this video is about. In the event of a power cut, nothing changes. Gas boilers, cars, when it comes to refueling them, rely on electricity as much as the electrical electrification of things does. So there we go, I'm done. Oh, um, membership, subscribe, all the usual stuff that nobody pays attention to has already stopped watching this video for. Um, is there anyone watching this video right now? If there is, put, put a joke in the comments, then I'll know that you've watched it right to the end.